Hello everyone. Today I will be doing a highlight of a game I had recently in the USS Kid. In my opinion, probably the best premium destroyer at tier 8. Maybe the best premium destroyer in the entire game, at least that is currently available. Uh, this is a game that is not necessarily the biggest damage. I mean, it didn't set any world records. The damage is pretty okay in the end, but it really showcases the strengths of the kid, which is winning games. The kid is a monster, and you know if you're looking for a tier eight premium uh, DD, or for example, you want to learn how to play DD. I highly, highly suggest the Kid. I think the Cossack is up there as well, but the Kid with its heals um, just gives you that extra bit of flexibility to impact the game better. Uh, the Cossack has the quick fire smokes, um, it's more nimble, has better stealth, but in my opinion, the Kid is overall better. Uh, and. It actually has, as you'll see in this game, some decent AA. I mean, it's not going to... It's it's not the AA monster that it used to be. Uh, no ship in the game really is. But, especially against carriers that don't know what they're doing, um, or tend to fly into flak, the kid will still crush a bunch of planes. So, let's look at the teams. They have a Shikaku... It's a pretty heavily tier 8 game, uh, except for destroyers and cruisers. All the battleships are tier 8. I'm going wide to start off because when I play DD, I generally like to take a wide position to spot. And you see the Fabuki is going into the cap. Um, you know, I can sit in A and stall it for eternity, but what does that really accomplish other than stalling the cap? I'm not spotting anything. Uh, it, the way that this cap works, I can't really go around and shoot the Fabuki. I'm taking too much damage uh, if I do that. Definitely risking getting killed or eating torpedoes. Um, I wanted to see if the Talon was on my side, which he was. I faded out the radar, I took one salvo from him, and it was about 1500 damage, which is essentially what I wanted to do. Talon is a very short duration radar. Um, doesn't have insane DPM or anything, so his radar doesn't really scare me uh, if he's the only one that can shoot at me. Target. So now that the radar's gone, I'm feeling pretty good. I also see on the minimap the, that the Akazuki, which is the other th main thing that I was worried about in this game, is on the other side. So I'm pretty free to do whatever I want here. But what I really want to do is I want to kill the Talon. Because once he's gone, then I'm really free to do whatever I want. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with the kid, um, it's different than most USDDs in that, well, it is a Fletcher class, so that's familiar to most people, but it only has one set of torpedoes, and the torpedoes have a pretty long reload time of two minutes. They only go 9.2 kilometers. They're very slow. They hit decently hard, but uh, this is not a torpedo boat. This is a gunboat through and through. You have USN Smokes, you have Heal, and you have Defensive AA. So what the kid excels at is getting into gunfights, particularly with other destroyers, but you can also, you know, get into gunfights with battleships, you know, farm them from open water, use your four smokes. I have four because I'm running Superintendent. So I sent Torps for this Talon, expecting him to either continue reversing or to just kind of sit in that position. I'm hoping to, like, dev strike him here. Um, I'm thinking that I'm maybe going to hit two, but he accelerates and I only hit one. I don't even get a flood. So that was pretty unlucky. I really wanted to kill him there. But now he's turning out, and I'm hoping that my team is going to be able to do something to him. He pops his radar again because he got torps, but only the Bismarck is able to shoot at me which again, I'm not particularly concerned about. One of the awesome benefits of being a destroyer with a heal is you can take a little chip damage here and there. And I, mean, I really, 
I, I, I hit the brakes when he fires a salvo, he misses everything. So again, that's two radars down, I've taken barely any damage. Now I'm going to use this smoke to get some damage on the Bismarck, because he's the only battleship on the flank, and he's actually currently the only ship on the flank. So if I can get out of, uh, him out of the way, then... You know, my team, myself and my team can just push up the 1-2 line and gain a lot of map control. Uh, the Talon's now pushed into the cap, which again is exactly what I wanted to do by getting out here and just making this position awkward for him, is preventing him from sitting on this rock. Uh, we know radar cruisers love to sit on rocks. Um, I'm, at this point, sort of angry at my team especially my battleships, that there's a broadside Talon in the middle of the cap, and he's not dead yet. Um, so, the Bismarck took some good damage from me and the uh, Vittorio Veneto. Uh, but I didn't see the point in sitting in smoke and farming him any longer, because... Well, a, he's running away. B, I really want to get that Talon killed. Now, you can also see in the middle of the map that we have a Shinonome. And the Talon is going after him. And what I don't want to happen is the Talon to kill our Shinonome uh, before he dies. Or especially kill our Shinonome and, and survive, because that would be really, really bad. Uh, we've lost three ships. They've lost two. But this Bismarck is very low. The Talon is really low. And the Fabuki is very low. And we see that our CV gets the Talon. Bismarck is on 13k. My Fabuki survived, thankfully, which is really good. Uh, he's in smoke in front of a North Carolina, which means that he might be able to get some torps on him. Uh, we lose a hipper there, unfortunately. So we're down on ships again. But the Bismarck is only on 10k. Oh, and then I see the Fabuki. So this is a free kill. So I'm going to pick up two kills here, I'm pretty sure. Uh, at least that's what I'm thinking right now. I get the Fabuki, and then I can just gun down the Bismarck, get the cap, and it should be an easy win. That's what I'm thinking at the time. I haven't really been able to see what's going on on the other side, but I see we have the cap. Uh, our Alabama is pushing. There we go, the Bismarck is dead. This North Carolina is walking into a Shinonome, so I'm expecting him to die, but I'm not exactly sure what our Shinonome was doing. He did not hit a single torp on the North Carolina. I don't know if he sent them earlier, or if he was waiting. I'm, I'm not sure what happened there. But now we have to deal with the full HP North Carolina. Um, and I'm concerned about my two battleships, because considering how much difficulty they had killing a broadside Talon, uh, in the middle of the cap, it was pretty close to them. I'm not confident that they're going to be able to do much against this North Carolina. We're again down on ships. Uh, I don't know the HP of the Alabama, but he's the last ship on the other side. Uh, we've lost every ship that isn't a, a battleship or a CV, excluding me. Uh, so if the if the Alabama dies, the Akazuki is able to get D for free, and maybe even go get B, run at our CV. They still have a Vittorio Veneto, an Algeri, and a Dido. I don't know their HP. They could be full. They could be almost dead. I just I have no idea. So I smoke up, oh, and we just lost the Alabama as well. So D side did not go well for our team at all. Uh. So I'm already thinking that I'm going to have to carry here. It's not unsavable because we still have uh, three caps, but we are down two ships. Um, I really want to be to save our Veneto here, but the way that this North Carolina stopped made it really awkward for me. I didn't want to risk running out and taking a bunch of damage because my health is very important right now if I want to carry this game. Uh, but I really want to save our Veneto because he's our tier 8 battleship. Oh, and we lost our New Mexico. So now he's not hes not only our, t our last tier 8 battleship, he's our only battleship left. Um, 
I really want to kill this North Carolina before he gets another salvo off. Am I able to? Yes, I am. So... I'm able to keep the Veneto at almost 40k HP. I don't know if he has any, has any heals left. But we're still on two ships. They have a Veneto, an Algeri, a Dido, and an Akazuki. And I spot the Dido. He's pretty healthy. Uh, he's not something I particularly want to fight, especially not at 6.2 kilometers. He has a lot of HE guns. And I see that the Algeri is literally full HP. Has not taken a single point of damage. Uh, I was hoping that maybe our Veneto would be able to, to delete him there. I think he should probably be shooting Sap at this point. Um, the Veneto has Roma, essentially Roma guns on the AP, which is very high penetration. Uh, whereas the Sap could do some pretty good damage against the Dido and the Algeri. Um, the Dido is in A. And this is where I start to get confused because... The Akazuki does not get D. And I'm not sure what this Akazuki was doing the entire game, but I don't want to spoil anything, but the Akazuki might have cost his, their, his team the game here. Uh, or made it a lot closer than it needed to be. So the Dido is in the cap. I'm waiting for the CV to spot so I can get resets on him. I didn't expect him to accelerate there. I thought he was just going to stay on the island. Uh... But, you know, I'm okay with taking this fight. I have a heal. He doesn't. It's going to be kind of difficult for him to hit me yet. Uh, 10 kilometers, I think, as I, like, a 2k salvo from him. But I'm able to get a reset on him. Um, I wanted my Veneto to stay with me here to, you know, shoot that uh, the Dido. But he actually gets a big salvo on the Algeri, which is really good. Uh, I think, actually, I'm okay with him, well, if it wasn't for the full HP Veneto in their spawn, I would have been okay with him pushing out there to kill the Algeri, because it would be harder for me to fight him than the Dido, but they have a full HP Veneto in spawn, and he's getting shot by the CV, and being farmed by the Algeri, so I know I'm going to lose the Veneto, um, so very shortly, it's going to be a 2 versus 5. Um, and I see the Akazuki out there farming the Veneto, which is a huge mistake. Um, although the Shikaku's planes are coming from D, so maybe they were talking in chat and the Shikaku said, Hey, I'm going to go get D, you kill the Veneto or something. I don't know. Or protect C because they thought I was going to go C, but there's no need for me to go to C. Um, and this is the first time I've used my defensive AA this game. I kind of take a bit of a big rocket strike. I'm surprised that these Chicago planes didn't get completely melted. Um, but now I'm realizing, okay, it's time to put the carry pants on. It's already a pretty good game for a kid, 100k. Um, again, this is not a huge damage destroyer. Uh, it's just a game winner. But I realize, given the circumstances, that I need to carry. Dido does not have Hydro, so I'm not concerned about him Hydro rushing me. I'm just waiting for the CV to spot him so I can kill him. Um, because I don't want to fight him this close. I'm going to lose way too much HP. Even though I'm about half and still have two heals, I don't want to be wasting HP needlessly, particularly with an Akazuki running around that I have no idea how healthy he is. I'm also able to do good damage on the Dido because it essentially has destroyer armor, so I don't shatter on him like I would on the Algeri, for example. But he has his own smoke screen. Um, I just kind of send the Torps. I'm confused how I'm spotted, but I guess there was a little spotting delay with the Dido. He's super low, I kill him with one salvo. Also, the Algeria is super low. So, I'm pretty confident that I can get two kills here. I would wish that I was able to reset the Algeria so we could have three caps. But, I was not. I don't think that the Torps are going to be able to hit. Uh, and this is where things start to get a little crazy. Because I'm going to be under constant attack from the CV. 
from now basically until the end of the game. And this is why this is where the kid uh, shines versus any other tier eight destroyer. Kill the Algerie there. Enemy cruiser destroyed. So we've whittled it down to a two v three, but they have a full HP Veneto, and they have an Akazuki who, again, I don't know what his HP is, but I need to basically protect D because that's what I'm almost positive they're going for right now. Uh, Shikaku's trying to tort me. I'm already up to 23 plane kills. My DFA is still up. So I want to keep my DFA up while the Shikaku rockets come in so I can maybe get like a flak burst on them. Unfortunately, it doesn't not look like I'm able to, so he's going to be able to get multiple uh, strikes on me, most likely. Um, and so I spot the Shikaku briefly, and he is going into D. The Akazuki has not been spotted, but I, I noticed that my party target ticked from 1 to 2, which means that he's at least in torpedo range, if not gun range. So I'm very concerned about the Akazuki right now. But my goal here is to obviously kill the CV because he is the one blocking the cap. Now, I was streaming this game. I got some grief from chat for sending these torpedoes. Um, in retrospect, as, as like my A defense expert, uh, in retrospect, it was probably not the best choice, but given that the kid only has one rack of torpedoes and what I thought the Veneto was going to do, what I wanted to do was send a rack of torps, maybe hit the Shikaku because he's either stuck on the island or autopilot bugs out or something, and then by the time the Veneto comes in here, I can kind of just camp on a rock and then maybe YOLO torp him out. But the Shikaku reverses, uh, dodges all my torpedoes, and now I don't have torps for a minute as I take a big salvo from Veneto. Uh, keep in mind, I would be super dead in any other destroyer right now, tier 8 destroyer, except for the kid. Um, I'm able to play insanely aggressively. I want to get... Uh, I want to get behind this island so that I'm blocking the Veneto, and this is where I'm wondering where the Akazuki is, because if the Akazuki is here during this fight, I'm most likely dead. Uh, I'm not sure where he went. <laughs> uh, I have no idea where the Akazuki went, and for that was extremely lucky. I took a massive salvo from the Veneto. If you couldn't see, I was down to 100 HP. Um, I popped my last heal. Uh, I'm up over 50 plane kills, by the way. Uh, I have a high caliber, four kills. Uh, so even if I die here, you know, I feel like I've kind of done my part. And the Pobeda finds the Akazuki. I guess the Akazuki went up there trying to kill him. Uh, I send the torps at the Shikaku. I've created enough distance between myself and the Veneto that I'm safe. Also, time is a, currently an issue. So, I basically just need to survive here and kill the CV. And it's a guaranteed win. We're up almost to 60 planes. I think my torpedoes are probably good on the Chicago. I got him extremely low, so one torpedo should kill him. And there we go. There's the Kraken. Enemy aircraft carrier. So, it's a win. It should not have been a win. If the Akazuki played that smarter, like I said before, it wouldn't have been a win. But, maybe he got greedy, wanted to go for the carrier. I don't know. Uh, all in all, a pretty wild game. Uh, only 30 seconds left. There's no way that the Veneto gets to our CV. 
you know, like I said at the start, 100, game, 164k is not an insane amount of damage by any means. Um, but just the survivability of the kid, um, its gunfighting capabilities, its torps aren't great, but I hit three of them, and they were really important torps. Now we'll look at the post-game statistics. Uh, I made over a million credits, even though I think I only had maybe one or two econ flags on. I was by no means full eco. I didn't even have a, a credit camo on. 164k, a defense expert, dreadnought, kraken, high caliber. Uh, moving on to the base XP, and this is where things get kind of crazy. 3.3k base. I had 57 planes. That contributed probably a decent amount, but I had over double the uh, second amount of base XP on my team. Uh, the, the Akazuki, who you know I had criticized earlier, finished first, but I, don't, I think if he had played that smarter, it would have been an e maybe not an easy win for them, but it most likely would have been a win for them. I'm not sure what my New Mexico was doing. Uh, 13 XP. He was definitely playing. He wasn't AFK, so I'm not sure what was going on there, but generally speaking, I, I don't think my team really deserved to win this game, at least looking at the post-game score. And then we can see the damage that I did. Uh, mostly HE damage. I did about 23 K and AP uh, to the Shikaku broadside, I think. Decent amount in fire damage. <laughs> 85,000 AA damage. Uh, but look at the damage I received. Uh, 27, almost 28,000 damage received. Uh, and I could, I think I left the game on about 3,000 or 3,500. So I could have tanked almost 30,000 damage which is pretty nuts in a tier 8 destroyer. And we'll look at my captain build and modules next. Okay, so for commander skills, I have preventative maintenance, last stand, survivability expert, superintendent for the four heals. Uh, you know, it's not often that you're going to be using all four heals, uh, but I did in... The last game, so I think having it is better than than not. Um, Adrenaline Rush, BFT, and Concealment. Now, the last two points uh, is a little, you know, kind of up to you. Uh, I take Party Target because I just think it's a really good skill. The kit is sort of unique uh, in that you can't really share the captain with other USMDDs, except maybe the black, um, because m most of, at least the high tier USMDDs are torpedo focused, uh, like the Fletcher and the Gearing and the Somers, whereas the Kid and the black are gun focused. So that's just something to keep in mind. As for modules, just the standard main armaments, engine, dispersion, because you're gun focus. I don't really care about a little extra torpedo speed, propulsion, and concealment. And you can take speed boost instead of defensive AA, but as you can see in the last game, particularly with defensive AA up, um, carriers are not going to have an easy time dealing with you, at least tier 8 and below. Tier 10, um, it's kind of a different story. But I hope you enjoyed the game. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching the USS Kid, which, despite being one of the older premiums in the game, is still holds up extremely well to this day. And, you know, maybe even better uh, in, in this day and age, considering the amount of CVs, subs are coming back. You know, a destroyer with a heal is just so, so strong. And... I love the kid. One of my favorite ships in the game. On that note, I will be signing off. Have a good one, y'all. Love you. Cheers.